Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. In this video, we're going to be going over um, one of the questions that a lot of people may have when working with Terraform um, is, should I be using a private module or a public module? Um, is there any um, security concerns or anything like that that I, you should have to worry about when you know using Terraform and deciding to use one or the other? Um, so... You know, everyone that works with Terraform at some point have has created a module, but you know, and, and how you use it will determine on uh, whether you should, you know, build one yourself or just use one that's already built and maybe modify it yourself um, and customize it to your liking. So there's, you know, no one real um, best practice answer. So it's really going to come down to business needs. So um, if you're on Terraform's website, you you may have seen this section where it says browse modules. And modules are basically just a, a, a package of self-contained, you know, Terraform files to build resources um, a lot more repeatable without having to write the same code over and over again. So um, if you've written your own modules before, uh, like we, we look at here, if we look at this one that I've been working on, so there's a... a uh, a lab I'm building to basically try and prevent, you know, IPv4 exhaustion in Azure. And so I got an Azure firewall, um, some resource groups, um, a network, some virtual networks and things like that. So essentially I could uh, turn this into a module, um, create some variables out of these and make it more dry to, to fit my mold. But um, say there's a part of my uh, setup where, you know what, I, I need a load balancer in here, but I don't want to have to build the whole thing. So what I could do is, you know, I could, you know, pull the module down from Terraform and actually use it in here. So, it's, you know, if I wanted a module or a load balancer, I could have a new file called a load balance lb.tf. And then if we go into the uh, Terraform website again here, let's pull that up. We can look for a module called, and, and so for, for you know people who may not be aware, there's a, a tier here that they show called Partner. And Partner is basically modules that are um, managed by, um, you know, HashiCorp, um, Mo HashiCorp partners that they, you know, certify, they probably have a process that they go through. And it's going to be mainly like the big wigs like Azure, AWS, Google, um, things like that. So if you click partner, this is one way to kind of make sure that you have a module that's kind of maintained, kept up to date um, by a particular um, authority that HashiCorp um, approves of. If you don't have this checked, then that's where you can run into where it's not necessarily that the module isn't secure or it's not done up to code or best practice. You could have it to where anyone could have uploaded that. And that's probably where a lot of, uh, a lot of the security concerns goes into uh, um, who built this, um, what's being done behind the scenes, what kind of outputs are being generated. Um, is there any custom scripts that's uh, being called within those uh, modules? So those are some of the security concerns. Um, concerns you may want to kind of you know vet out with some of the different modules that you use depending on who built it where it's come for some things you can kind of keep up and um you know look at while you're looking at these is your downloads so here we show that this has 71.1 million downloads and it was updated 13 hours ago that's one thing to look at um the provider down here uh you know where it was um or what it's used for you can typically click on these and you can see um, who is the modules managed by. You can go directly to the GitHub source code. So this here will show you that it's a part of the Terraform AWS modules. And looks like this is pretty actively maintained as far as uh, some of the other repos down there. So back to what I was saying before with the load balancer. So let's say I come in and search for a load balancer and here's some modules so we're going to say see all and i want to find one for azure i'm going to go ahead and filter that so here's one by azure load balancer um, 18,000 downloads so i'm going to go ahead and click on this one and if i wanted to just use this 
I could take this module block, and of course you're probably already aware, take this, put it in my code, and put in all the required inputs, which is basically just a resource name, resource group name. And if you're wondering, well, that, you know, is pretty simple. Well, yeah, it is, you know, all you need to provide is a resource group name, and the rest of it will be um, basically built. Now there's some optional inputs, like your allocation method, um, edge zone, front IP zones, front end name, but if you don't put anything, as you can see here, the default will be um, provided. So uh, another thing you could do, which I typically kind of find myself doing is if I go into the GitHub source code here, now there's some examples here as well, which are good to kind of check out. But if you click on the source code, you can go into the examples folder and see those same ones as well with the uh, example code. If you were to use this module yourself, they just kind of show you a way to kind of use it. And then there's also a little markdown file, looks like with some uh, version updates. So, uh, so, but like if you want to, you know, actually maintain this yourself, what you could do is actually take this, copy this here, and we're gonna go into our code. And let's go into this folder. So if we go, well, what I what I would usually do is let's let's just put this in another folder outside of the main one, and oop, we're gonna call that module. We're just call it load balancer module. And inside of here, let's just open this up in the uh, terminal. We want to do a git clone, paste that URL. And now I just downloaded all that. So what I would find myself doing is actually going through and taking everything that I want to use and just creating a module um, out of it myself. So, you know, I might even go in and take out some of this other stuff, delete that. Uh, let's just delete all of the license information. And we can keep the readme um, we can keep, see what's inside the readme. It's probably all the, yeah, so we can keep that. That's good. So we can delete that. So this is a fast track way to kind of have your own module, um, pretty quick. So now what I can do is take all of this. And we're going to cut it and inside of this same folder here, um, or outside of it, I can actually, you know, keep it within that, but I'm going to say just new folder, call it modules. And inside of here, I'm going to do a new folder called load balancer. And I'm going to paste everything in there. So everything inside of the uh, load balancer folder there, let's just make sure. Yes. Okay. So now we have this module, it's pulled down, we can go in, we can make changes. So now we can actually say, you know what, I wanna customize this a little better, uh, but now I don't have to really worry about uh, re uh, rebuilding everything from scratch. It's already done for you. Only thing we need to do is just go in and, and remove stuff that we don't want. So let's say, you know, there's tags. I don't really like how they're doing tags. Let's just take that off. Um, or else in there so okay that's one area then for like the um, name you know I don't want the uh, local.pip name I actually want it defined so I'm gonna say you know var dot public IP underscore name and then I'm gonna take that now and I have to actually go build a variable for that so we're gonna just I'll just throw this right here real quick and type it's going to be a string default. We're going to say actually test. And then for our description, it's going to be the name of the for the load. So that's it. So as we can see, that little error went away. So now we uh, we we updated the um, module. Well, we pulled it down, 
update it to our liking, add some new variables, and now we can uh, utilize this. Now, we're not actually going to be using the, uh, um, the source, which if we went back to Firefox, the Terraform module. So instead of it being source Azure load balancer, the source is going to be the source path into our modules folder. And then also all the inputs and outputs and everything like that uh, apply. So another good thing about that too is if you want some additional outputs that aren't in there, you can modify those and, and or remove ones that you don't want to be outputted. So the, the idea around if you should be using public uh, modules or um, private ones, it kind of just still comes down to whether it's, uh, you know, you want it a little more custom, you know, fit to what your needs are. Uh, as far as the security concern around it, I, I would always recommend anything that's um, publicly available on GitHub to, you know, at least take some time to to look through and see, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, because that will help also with troubleshooting down the line. And a lot of these modules, if you are using them and they're not kept up to date, some of those can cause some breaking changes in your infrastructure that can cause a problem. So if you're able to actually pull them down, maintain them yourself, that could be a good thing if you have the team around you to do it. And in that way, if there are any changes that need to come about, um, you can stay up to date on those. So again, if you have any questions in regards to your uh, current configuration, um, any modules you use or just building modules and, and maintaining them, drop me a comment down below. Again, like and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos on various Terraform best practices and, and, and your uh, the more subscriptions we get, the more great videos I can continue to make. So again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.